Cyberpunk 2.0 just got its biggest details yet. We also have a massive dev stream announcement, engine changes, and even min spec requirements. We have some brand new gameplay to go over, as well as some additional information from a lead developer, and some of the brand new things that you're going to see in 2.0. We got a lot to talk about. What's up, world? It's Jopia here, back in with every other check on all things Cyberpunk. Okay, so let's just jump right into the dev stream stuff, as well as the updated blog. So Cyberpunk's official Twitter tweeted this out, saying Night City Wire is back with a special Phantom Liberty episode. We'll talk about new radios, learn about Reed from Idris Alba himself, discuss gameplay and new abilities, and throw in a surprise or two. Don't miss it. Now, this is happening on Thursday, September 14th, 8 a.m. PDT. There was a couple discussions in my last video about this, if there was going to be a live stream and when it would happen. Also, we talked about the radios, and there are, I think, I believe from a commenter who pointed out that there's going to be three new radios. So I figured I'd make that correction there because that was the last and final one that they were announcing so far. Maybe we'll get some more at this live stream. We'll have to wait and see. Although, as I pointed out before, there's like over four hours of music in this game from both the radio stuff and the actual OST of the game. Now, jumping into that new blog here, they do discuss some stuff that's going to be coming in 2.0. So, the outlining here is for vehicle combat and car chase. They detail here that the first new option is shooting your pistol or SMG either from the back or of your motorcycle straight through your car's windshield. Or you can do this from the side window. In the case of cars with crystal dome tech, you can instead open up the sliding doors and shoot out that way. While on a bike, you can also use your melee weapons and attack enemies or even slice open windows or other cars. There's some pretty cool tech there. I think this reminds me of GTA stuff that you could shoot through the windows. The next option is using brand new mounted weapons available on certain Nomad cars that utilize the Crystal Dome tech. They also detail here that there are some Gatling guns on there. A more subtle approach to vehicle combat can be taken with the new car hacking abilities for Netrunner. And by subtle, we mean you can straight up explode other cars, make them slam brakes, or accelerate without stopping. Even more options are available for the most skilled Netrunners out there. This reminds me of that like watchdog scene where you were able to kind of change the light and then cars were slamming into each other or control the cars or the kind of barriers that would pop up. This seems really, really cool. It also reminds me of a mechanic from a game called Sleeping Dogs. If you guys have ever played that game there was some kind of cool mechanic where you could jump from car to car it's a little bit different however mechanically that sounds super cool to have an interactable with another vehicle definitely really impressed with that and that's going to be really cool to see in action now we did have that lead developer tweet that gives us some details on both the min spec as well as what we should expect from cyberpunk performance wise so philip outlined it on a tweet here saying before cyberpunk 27 2.0 npl please check conditions of your cooling systems in your pc we use all what you have so workload on the cpu 90 percent on eight core is expected. To save you time, please run Cinebench or Simulator and check the stability of your systems. I do think it was a bit of play on stuff here, but basically this game's going to be utilizing your entire system, which is good to hear. A lot of games lock out at four cores, but this one will utilize all eight if you have them. That's awesome to hear. There's been plenty of games that have been even trouble with multi-core, which is like Tarkov had issues with that at the start. There's been multiple issues there with that, and even for me, Starfield doesn't really utilize my CPU as much. There's been some recent titles that just haven't utilized it, so I'm glad to hear that they're actually utilizing the CPU, and yeah, if you have a good cooling system, you should be fine. If anything, just throw on some new thermal paste to reapply it if you're that concerned about it. However, it's really not that serious of an issue, and I think he was just mostly telling you that, hey, this is going to be utilizing a lot of power. He did also follow up on a tweet here saying, follow up to my previous tweet, my intention was to highlight the need to maintain your cooling systems and check them regularly. Neither Cyberpunk 2077 after 2.0 nor Phantom Liberty will melt your PCs. The game will perform well on recommended hardware. And yeah, as I said there, it's mostly just saying that, hey, we're going to be utilizing it and not just having this excess power left over like some games do. Now, he did also post the min recommended and even ultra setting specs here, including ray tracing and overdrive. Another great thing to note here is that only the RT overdrive was measured with DLSS, meaning that the rest of the specs and outlines here are all utilizing native resolution, which is great to hear. There's been a lot of recent games that have been used, utilizing or at least kind of showcasing it with only DLSS and not the native resolution. I'm pretty sure Starfield, even when you switch the settings, it instantly enables FSR for you even at ultra it has fsr on by d which is just kind of insane in terms of everything especially having an upscaler and ultra resolution you know most people do want to play it native if they can and dlss and these upscales are mostly just utilized to push that higher envelope to get the higher frame so you can get more of a smooth experience not to optimize games so really glad on cdpr here for utilizing that only with the rt overdrive and that makes sense because that is a very very hard to essentially run that on any one system really it seems like they really did 
optimize this game because the minimum specs and recommended specs actually seem pretty good. They're actually a lot lower than some recent titles, even though the game looks as good as it does. Another few notable things is that if you do want to run it on ultra settings or if you want ray tracing on ultra, you will need an NVMe. And we also did have that brand new gameplay again from Munch118x. I'll probably try to link to their socials down below, at least the ones that I can find. But if you do want to check out this gameplay, I will have a link to it down below. I do think it's cool that they're partnering with someone that can actually play games and not just doing on full journalist mode. It's nice to see that for a change, and yeah, he does make some really cool gameplay. It's worth checking out. We had a Reddit user here by the name of No Entrepreneur, who essentially compiled a bunch of stuff here that showcases all the engine changes, or at least most of the engine changes that we'll be seeing in 2.0. We're obviously getting that DLSS 3.5 that's been showcased. Even FSR 3.0 is actually coming too, but it's not available just yet. They said it's around quarter 1, 2024. Xbox Series S will feature the same 60 FPS as it does now. However, it'll probably look a little bit better with Phantom Liberty, or at least it seems like it'll be better or visually more appealing in that section of the game. The game has been heavily improved engine-wise, further optimization since the new features consume more than before. And yeah, from the minimum spec sheets, I definitely think they did optimize because those are pretty low comparative to how good this game looks, and most people use this as like the visual benchmark. Especially when you compare that to some of the recent titles which have the recommended specs on this game as the minimum specs for their game. And as we went over earlier, they obviously mentioned the PC related stuff to overheating or at least that it's going to utilize more of your CPU power. Another thing notable about that minimum spec sheet here is that there's going to be no HDD support for 2.0. So if you do have a hard drive, I would just look to getting an SSD more so if you do have an M.2 or NVMe slot, maybe try to invest there into that. However, SSDs in general have been kind of on the cheaper side. I think as of late, they've been really cheap. In fact, I got a pretty good deal on a 2 terabyte NVMe recently. So it's definitely worth looking into if you are trying to get an SSD or at least upgrade your system. They also mentioned that character models, lighting and other aspects, and visuals are going to be improved in 2.0, including animations. Crazy to hear they're doing further improvements. The game already looks incredible, so that's going to be nice to see. They made a note here on being proud of Red Engine 4, so maybe that's a huge improvement on their engine. They also got an HDT and SMT AMT fix as a part of 2.0. I do remember this as being one of the first mods that I ever installed on Cyberpunk was the SMT fix. I'm really happy to hear that as I do have AMD in my system currently for the CPU, so yeah, that's going to help me out a lot. They also improved the weather system and, in general, more rain. That'll be definitely cool to see with this update. Maybe there'll be some cool weather effects. As always, everything I talked about will be down below in the description. If you enjoyed today's video, like, like, and subscribe, and until next, deuces!